So, separation principle we are going to discuss stage 1. Imagine that there is a saliva in front of you as it is shown in the slide and we are gripping the saliva by the clamp 1 and the clamp 1 is at a say is at a distance x from the edge of the saliva. Now, what will happen fiber lying under the clamp will be gripped at different locations along their length as you can see in the diagram and now let us pass a comb consisting of very fine needles through the right hand side of the fringe. What is going to happen? All fibers which are not really gripped by the clamp one, all those fibers are basically loose in the fringe and they will be removed as shown by the, by fi, by the diagram uh, that fiber A, fiber B and fiber C. As you see that these fibers are not really gripped by clamp one and therefore, as soon as we pass the needles of the comb through the fringe, these loose fibers will be removed from the fringe. Now, the cone fringe which will be left and being gripped by the clamp one will have have fibers projecting out on the right hand side of the clamp and the length of this projected out portions is going to vary between 0 to capital L, where capital L is the length of the longest fiber in the population. After this, we move on to stage 2. The diagrams are shown on the right hand side. Now, place another clamp as shown here, clamp 2 on the right side of clamp 1 at a distance small d from clamp 1, which is shown in the diagram. Now, clamp 1 has to be opened so that the fibers are not gripped now. Now, clamp 2 is now closed. So, the fibers which are under the clamp 2, they are actually gripped by clamp 2. So, if I now pull clamp 2 towards right hand side, what is going to happen? Fibers which are gripped by clamp 2 will all be removed. Therefore, as shown in the diagram that these fibers are the fibers which are gripped by clamp 2, but even though their left hand projected end may go beyond clamp 1, but because clamp 1 is not really holding those fibers right now, because we have opened the clamp. As we pull this clamp 2, all the fibers which are gripped by clamp 2 will be removed as a fringe. And now, the length of the fibers held by clamp 2, if we try to find out what are the length of these fibers which are gripped by clamp 2 or those which have been removed by clamp 2. This length will vary between d to l, because even a fiber like shown here, if it is a fiber of length d, if it is placed like this, then this fiber is going to be gripped by clamp 2 and when I will remove it, a fiber as short as d also will be removed and becomes a part of the detached fringe. Thus, the fibers having length in between d to l as shown in the diagram will be separated out from rest of the fibers. Now, we move on to the next slide. So, let us say that is stage 3. And we see the diagram on the left hand corner of the slide. So, what is stage 3? Here now, we are shifting clamp 1, because part of the, so first of all, we remove the loose fibers and we throw them out. Now, what we did after that, that we brought clamp 2 and removed some fibers and the fibers which are gripped by clamp 2 were varying in length between small d to l. After this, we shift clamp 1 to the left hand side by a small amount f as shown in the diagram. If you see the green rectangle which is representing clamp 1, 
So, the clamp 1 has shifted to the left hand side by small amount f and we have again gripped the sliver or the lap whatever it is. As a result what is going to happen? The trailing ends of many fibers having length between L to F plus D will fall in front of clamp 1 because there will be some fibers projecting out from here to there. This is the previous position of the clamp 1. So, there will be some fibers which are earlier projecting out till D, their trailing end may still continue and go beyond clamp 1 also. Some of them also may the trailing ends may terminate in front of clamp 1. So, there are many fibers depending upon their length, depending upon their position. Some of them may go beyond clamp 1 and will be gripped by clamp 1. Some of them may be going here and terminate somewhere here like I am drawing some lines like this or something like this. So, all these fibers are now not gripped by clamp 1. So, they are because their trailing end is not reaching the location of the clamp 1. So, now what we do? Fibers in the length category varying from 0 to f plus d where f is the distance by which the clamp 1 was moved backward and d is the distance between the two clamps. They become loose. All those fibers will be loose in the fringe and they will be in front of clamp 1. Now, if we pass the comb again, the comb is going to remove the loose fibers only from the fringe and what will happen? That all fibers which are loose now and having length varying between 0 to f plus d will be removed and these are the fibers which are basically the short fibers. So, once we remove these fibers, that is this group of fibers will be left with a again comb fringe gripped by clamp 1 and in that cone fringe the projected out portion of the fibers will be varying between 0 to capital L where capital L is the length of longest fibers. So, this is how we repeat this process. We go to stage 4 let us say now and what we are going to do? We will clamp 2 will be now brought in again and placed at a distance d as we did earlier from clamp 1 and similarly we repeat the no, same process clamp 1 we open it out and clamp 2 will be gripping all the fibers which are here but is placed at a distance d from clamp 1 after gripping all these fibers now clamp 2 will be moved forward. So, length of fibers removed by clamp 2 will therefore, in this case also will be varying between D to capital L. So, this is the way if we repeat this process again and again, then clamp 2 will find will always hold fibers of length varying between D to capital L and the comb down material that we removed by the comb will be varying in length between 0 to f plus d. So, therefore, there will be some fibers varying between d to f plus d whose fate is uncertain. They can be separated out as long or as short fibers depending upon their position in this sliver or in the lap. This is how we can sort out short fibers from the longer ones and this is the principle which we are actually following when we have the combing machine. So, the combing machine follows exactly the same principle the way we have described. This is the only way to separate out short fibers from longer fibers. There is no other means right now to really segregate the entire population into two groups. So, we can say that the separation process 
in actual comber works on the principle just discussed. The nipper plates actually act as clamp one, they are going to grip the lap, the detaching roller will act as clamp two. Now, instead of taking the plate backwards as we are doing here, the clamp one was always shifted backwards in order to grip fresh sliver or fresh lap. What we do in the actual case, the lap is fed forward by an predetermined amount. That is what we do in the actual machine. Then instead of we do not take back the clamp in this case, because the plates, nipper plates will be acting as clamp one, they are fixed in space, the lap is moved forward. The detaching rollers which behaves like clamp two also do not move laterally as we are doing it here that clamp two is gripping the fibers and again we are moving it forward directions in order to remove the long fibers from the short ones. In this case what we do? We do not really move detaching rollers laterally, they remain fixed in positions, but they turn and because of the rotate they can remove the fringe that is the uh, especially the longer fibers from the shorter ones. And what we do that the cone fringe is brought closer to the detaching roller as we are doing the clamp 2 was being brought closer to clamp 1 and we maintain a certain distance between these two and that distance was d. Similar thing we do in the case of actual combing machine also, the nipper assembly will move forward and we will bring the fringe closer to the detaching roller nips which actually we will discuss in more details when you discuss the combing machine and the detaching rollers will therefore, as they rotate they will remove the comb fringe. This thing the about the, the working of the machines will be more clear as we go to the you know to our next class when we will discuss in more details about the machine and this working. So, this is the process by which we keep on separating the shorter group of fibers from the longer ones. The process is discontinuous in nature as you have seen in this case and with this we close the discussion on the principle of separation of fibers. Now we move on to the out of our next topic. Thank you.